Here's an overview of how to use the MCP41 or 42XXX series of digital potentiometers with an Arduino and a couple of quick demos. I've already used the X9C series of potentiometers, but there's some differences between these two families. For example, the MCP has 256 wiper positions, while the X9C only has 100. So you get finer control over the position with the MCP family. The MCP uses an SPI interface, so you do need an SPI controller to send commands and data to this digital pot, while the X9C family just has an up-down control pin and an increment control to move the wiper in that direction, and a chip select. So you can more easily control the X9C if you don't happen to have an SPI master controller. The MCP devices can run between 2.7 and 5.5 volts, while the X9C runs at 5 volts. The maximum current through the wiper on the pot is 1 milliamp for the MCP, but the X9C can handle a wiper current of 4.4 milliamps. So we have to look at the features and limitations of each digital potentiometer family to decide what's best. I'm using the 100K version of the MCP, and I have the dual potentiometer package here. So we have three SPI pins, chip select, clock, and data in. Power supply and ground, I'm going to use 5 volts, powered from an Arduino Uno. I'm not using serial out, and I'm not going to reset or shut down the device, so these pins will be tied high. Then I have potentiometer 0 and 1, wiper, and terminals A and B. So when we communicate with the chip, we say which potentiometer we want to control. We can control one or the other, or both simultaneously. And we can give commands like put the potentiometer in shutdown mode, or move the wiper to a certain specific position just to get up and running with the 100k pot. Depending how we have this connected up, including what supply voltage we're running at, our nominal 100k can be 70k up to 130k. And running at around 5 volts, the wiper resistance can be 125 ohms up to 175 ohms. There's all kinds of operation info you can look through. I'm going to use this digital pot in a couple of different modes. I'm using the Arduino Uno, and it's plugged into USB so I can use the serial monitor, and I'm also using the Uno to provide 5 volts and ground to the whole circuit. So here, SPI, serial, clock, and data are coming from the Uno SPI pins. I'm using digital pin 2 as an output chip select. Reset and shutdown are tied high, so the chip is not shut down or reset. And then we just have potentiometers 0 and 1 here. So I'll have two sketches and two circuit setups. With the first sketch, I'll be moving the potentiometer wiper up and down while I probe the resistance with a DMM. And in the other sketch, I'm going to add this op-amp circuit where one potentiometer goes to control the gain here. The other potentiometer goes here as a voltage reference on the op-amp. So with one pot from the UNO, I can move the wiper along, and it will change the ratio of my feedback resistor to my input resistor. And with a sine wave in, that will allow me to change the gain and make the output sine wave larger or smaller. With the other pot on VREF, as I move the wiper one way or the other, I'm actually going to shift this sine wave up or down at whatever amplitude it already is set for with the first pot. To control these digital pots over SPI, we send two bytes. One is a command byte and one is a data byte. For example, if we want to move the wiper to the middle position of potentiometer 0, the command byte would be 0001 so that we are going to write data and then 0001 again because we want to write data to potentiometer 0. And then the data we would send is 128 to move the wiper on this pot to the center position. If we wanted to actually put one or both of these potentiometers in shutdown mode instead of actually moving the wiper, we would have 10 instead of 01 here. 
and then which potentiometer, or both, we would like to shut down. So for the first demo, where all I'm doing is measuring the resistance on these pots with a DMM, here's the sketch I came up with. I found a bunch of good info at this DF robot link. So you can also go there for more info. But let's just breeze through this. So I'm going to need to use SPI with my chip select pin. And for resistance calculations within the sketch, so I can print it on the serial monitor, there's a maximum of 256 wiper positions between 0 and 255. I happen to be using a 100k pot, and the wiper resistance is expected to be nominal 125 ohms on this pot. And here's just configuration bytes, like we saw on the data sheet. So assigning these constants to something more legible, I can more easily write the sketch. So I initialize SPI, then in the loop, just to do a quick skim from minimum to maximum resistance, I'm taking this one pot and moving the wiper to position zero, then going a quarter of the way each time until I'm at maximum, just so I can see on the DMM, does it look about right? So I have a function called set pot wiper where I say what pot, and what wiper position. And this was inspired by the DF robot example code I saw. So we make sure whatever wiper position we're trying to set is within 0 to 255. Then over SPI, whichever pot we wanted to talk to, we address that. And then we send the position wiper data. At this point, the digital pot should have moved its wiper. And now just for confirmation on the serial monitor, I'm calculating what the resistance should be. The resistance from the wiper to the B terminal, if I'm probing this with a DMM, is going to be the 100K of the pot from end to end times whatever wiper position we said to go to, divided by the total number of positions, there are 256 available, plus the wiper resistance, because we are probing this complete circuit. So we're going to have resistance from the wiper to the terminal, and an inherent 125 ohms of the wiper itself. And aside from that, then on the other digital pot, I'm just going through all the wiper positions from min to max, up and down, just so we can see the finer increments and compare those to the DMM. Here's the surface mount digital pot chip soldered to a breakout board so I can use it on a breadboard with power disconnected to the chip. If we try to probe across the potentiometer terminals, we don't get the 100k resistance we're expecting. It's like an unpowered chip being probed. So if I plug in USB and power everything, now we get 102.5k on our 100k pot end to end. And it's the same measurement on the other potentiometer. It's 102.6k there. So now if I hold the Arduino in reset, get the serial monitor running, and then probe from the wiper to the B terminal, once I take it out of reset, it will run the code that should go from close to minimum resistance, and then 25% at a time, it should go 25k, 50, 75, and 100k max. 150 or so ohms was the minimum, then about 25.8k, 51.4k, 77k, and 102k. On the other pot, again, I saw around just over 150 ohms at the bottom end. So it's going one step at a time up from minimum to maximum, 0 to 255, for the positioning. So around here we have just over 9k on the serial monitor and on the pot. I'll fast forward and get us toward the 50k middle of the range. As we cross 50k on the real pot, it was 49.27k on the calculated serial monitor output. 55k on the pot, we got 54.3k. Again, knowing that this is just ideal calculation in the serial monitor, and we have some real characteristics to factor in for the actual pot. I'll fast forward again to get to the end of the pot. So here, up at the maximum 255 wiper position, it's calculating it should be 99.6k. 
and we have our 102K. Now for the op amp circuit where these two digital pots are going to control the gain of the op amp and the offset reference voltage controlling the position of the signal between the rails. I'll put up a scope capture showing the overall impact of using these two potentiometers so that things will make sense as we look through the sketch. Very similar to the other sketch, the first thing I'm doing is setting both pots to the center position. So that will give me 2.5 volts here on VREF because I'll have 50k here and 50k here forming a voltage divider. So my output should be nicely centered at 2.5 volts between ground and the 5 volt rail. And the gain of this signal should be minus 1. So we should get the same signal out that we are putting in in amplitude, but it'll be inverted because of the inverting configuration. So we have nominal 50k feedback resistance and 50k input resistance. Then I'm just going to move the wiper on each pot up and down. So first I'm going to change the gain of the op amp, try to make the signal larger and smaller. Then I want to try changing the other pot for the V ref voltage and see if I can shift the signal up and down. We're using the same function to control the pot wiper. So that's how we can control the MCP family of digital pots. We have to make sure we keep the wiper current below 1 milliamp, which when we're using it to control op amps with such a high input impedance, we're safe using it in these types of applications. But we wouldn't want to use these as load resistors, for example. We just don't want to be putting excessive current through there. So if you found this video useful, and you might even have some ideas now to use these sort of devices, give the video a thumbs up. I'll see you on the next video.